Hi, this is Rich Helpy. I'm your host of The Common Bridge. Common Bridge, of course, is available on most podcast outlets, on YouTube TV, and, of course, register free at richardhelpy.com. Um, I've been speaking m- several times about guns and gun policy. Uh, I will go over my plan for graduated licensing and how it would have stopped most of the major gun crimes that have so horrified the nation. Uh, Today, I do want to share with you the results of a survey, but let me back up one step. The reason I did the survey is this. In, In my work in putting in computer systems or in investing in companies, the chief question is, what problem are we trying to solve or what objective are we trying to achieve? And it's only successful that effort that you're putting in if you know what your end goal is. So I said, all right, are we looking at the right problem? And I keep hearing gun violence, gun violence, gun violence. And then I see one side saying, well, we're going to take guns away from everybody. That's literally the position. And we have this other side saying, you don't even have to show ID or show you're capable and you can carry a firearm any place that you want to have at it. Okay. To both, frankly. All right. Um, so I did the survey. It's not a scientific survey, uh, but the results were so stunning. I thought I'd share them with you today. Uh, again, it was not, I didn't go find a population and say so many of this, so many of that type of person, but I did ask people from all points on the political spectrum, many points on the socioeconomic strata, and the description by, you know, gender and race and such was pretty diverse. So let me share with you. Here's the questions. And by the way, try this survey uh, with your friends and colleagues. Uh, And I always preface it, don't answer any question that you don't want to. First question, do you own a gun or have you owned a gun? Next question, Have you ever fired a gun? Okay. Third question. If I handed you a gun, would you go shoot somebody with it? Universally, people said, no, I would not do that. So the fourth question, why not? Answers. It's not in my moral code. I couldn't bring myself to do that. I can't imagine it. I just don't have that in me. I'd be horrified to be injuring somebody like that. So the follow-up question, what if I handed you a pickaxe? Would you hit somebody with it? No. Well, how about a sword? No. Now, I will say there were a few people that paused, thoughtfully said, well, you know, if someone was breaking into my house or threatening my family, or I really felt that I had no other choice, then I might be able to. So I'm listening to that and saying, hmm, is it the weapon, you know, in this case, the gun, or is it the combination of the gun and the human being that's handling it? Because there's 300 million of the firearms in the United States today, including 15 million of the weapons that are classified as assault weapons, okay? And if you look at all the big tragedies, nearly all of them were preventable had my plan for graduated licensing been in place. Now, not 100%. Um, By way of example, the recent tragedy in Chicago that took the life of a police officer, uh, my understanding is that the firearm was purchased legally in Hammond, Indiana, but the person buying the gun did not answer truthfully on the background check questionnaire, which asked, is this for you or are you going to transfer it, sell it, give it away to another person, Um, which is exactly what he did. The two people that did the shooting apparently were felons, were not supposed to have a firearm. So a number of current laws were broken that led uh, to that shooting. Um, And I should also mention that, you know, two thirds of the firearm deaths in the United States Uh, are suicides. And I think that's open to discussion. Would that number of suicides be there absent the firearm? uh, Or is it just a very efficient way 
uh, for people. Another aspect we don't hear about very often is the people that are injured by firearms but don't perish. And that is a cost to society, and it's a horrible thing uh, for someone that has been severely injured by a, a bullet. Uh, you know, they can end up in wheelchairs and re rehabilitation and, and lives of pain. It's not a subject that's very often talked about. But the problem seems to be, if I can give guns to people and not one person would shoot someone with it, it's we need to make sure that we keep the guns out of the wrong hands. And the program that I've laid out, Parkland would not have happened. Boulder would not have happened. Many of the others would not have happened. Um, you know, Sandy Hook's debatable um, because the shooter uh, killed his mother and then obtained her properly stored firearms. But just quickly, just to wrap up on how this can be solved in a way other than we take everybody's guns and other than everybody's packing, um, it goes like this, that just like everything else we do, driving, flying, uh, medical practice, your first license doesn't get you the most powerful weapon you can get. You're, you're able to use a uh, perhaps a revolver of a limited capacity and a limited number of shots. You're tested by a, an instructor. Uh, they observe you. Uh, you pass a written test. You can move to the next level of firearm and so forth. So that by the time you get to the point where you're able to handle the most powerful weapons, you've been observed for a period of months or perhaps years. You have been drilled and instructed in the storage requirements, and you understand the incredible power that you're walking around. Get us away from this idea that a 19-year-old or an 18-year-old can walk into a gun shop, buy the most powerful weapon that, that there is, and get a 1,000 rounds of, infra, of ammunition and be done. This is Rich Helpy on the Common Bridge, and I appreciate my listeners and viewers watching. Thank you. Thank you for watching Richard Helpy's Common Bridge. Please click the subscribe button below. Also, tune into our podcast, Richard Helpy's Common Bridge, on Apple, iHeart, Amazon, and others. Also, be sure to visit us online at richardhelpy.com.